Coffee addiction is real, and Americans drink more coffee than anyone else. In fact, we drink about 400 million cups of coffee every day. That's 146 billion a year. The latest edition of the American Psychiatric Association's Mental Health Bible lists caffeine intoxication and withdrawal as new diagnoses. Here with more is Dr. Holly Phillips, a CBS News medical contributor. Good morning, Holly. Good morning. Is, is caffeine addiction really a mental illness? Well, really, technically it is. I'll explain. The DSM-4 lists all mental diagnoses, all psychiatric diagnoses, things ranging from schizophrenia to depression to anxiety. Included in that has always been substance-related issues, whether it's alcoholism or cocaine or heroin abuse or withdrawal. Caffeine is a drug, and when you have those symptoms of withdrawal, it is also uh, included in the classification. You mentioned symptoms, so what are they for caffeine intoxication? For caffeine intoxication, and we're seeing more of this now because of these energy drinks, we're seeing people coming into the emergency room. It's a whole constellation of symptoms, but they include things like flushed face and palpitations, uh, anxiety. We've even seen cases of psychosis, people seeing things and hearing things that aren't there because they've just had so much caffeine. Are the withdrawal symptoms the same or do they differ? <clears throat> withdrawal symptoms are different. If you are really addicted to caffeine and then you suddenly stop, you have to, to fall into this DSM category. You have to have three out of five uh, different symptoms. They include things like depression, headache, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, and even some flu-like like symptoms, muscle aches and pains. Um, I actually at one point was up to a pot of coffee a day in medical school. Really, I had just built up this huge tolerance. I went cold turkey, and this is why I believe in this diagnosis. I was definitely physically and even mentally ill. I felt horrible for a week. Well, you obviously did well on the exams, though, because you <laughs> yeah, are a That's doctor. all that matters. <laughs> yes, really. You've got to keep my priorities together here. I want to ask, though, because you're saying in particular of the five symptoms after 24 hours of withdrawal, how many does it take? How many symptoms do you see to know that you actually have a problem? Well, it really should be three out of the, out of the five to fall into the psychiatric diagnosis. But really, you know that you have... Uh, you're addicted to caffeine if you feel anything if you skip your morning cup. So a lot of people who skip their morning cup of coffee get a headache, and that in and of itself is a sign that you're dependent on the drug. Is there, is there a safe way to, to go through withdrawal without getting sick? I mean Right. Really, it's all about doing it gradually. So you might want to do half decaf and half uh, caffeine in your regular cups of coffee, or just try and cut down on your cups of coffee gradually during the day. If you are going to go cold turkey, do it over a vacation, because you might not feel well for about a week. Last but not least, I mean, we've always heard there's health benefits to coffee, though, as well. So how do you weigh the benefits? There's, with there certainly are. A very interesting study out just a couple of months ago showed that uh, having a little bit of coffee decreases your risk of diabetes and even Alzheimer's disease. It's all about moderation. I Dr. guess that's the key. Dr. Holly Phillips, thanks. Sure.